Good morning, all you folks watching this here channel on the Tuber Uber. It's the old soldier coming at you from Robinson County, North Carolina. Alrighty, folks, I hope everybody's off to a good day. So called Super Tuesday is over with. Um, apparently, the states had their primaries yesterday. The former Vice President Joe Biden seems to come out of, seems to have come out ahead, but been followed pretty close by that socialist. And then poor little old Elizabeth Warren, she didn't really barely register. And of course Bloomberg just made a total total and complete jackass jab of an idiot. I almost said a wordy dirt. Uh, uh, of himself. Poor Dulce Gabbard, I mean, she, I think one, one place she got maybe 1% of the vote, bless her heart. But anyway, in lighter news, um, I don't know if y'all know who the comedian Terrence Williams is. Um, I follow him on Instagram, but he is a, he's a black comedian, and he's a Trump supporter. Um, dude's guy, dude, dude's funny. Um, chance go check him out on Instagram and he's got a lot of good videos and stuff posted there long story short there's this video that he's watching it's a Fox News interview with Donna Brazil and if you don't know who Donna Brazil is she's the former chairperson of the Democratic National Convention okay she's the one that rigged the primaries last time old Phil the burn ran for uh ran for uh Senate, okay? She's the one that fed debate questions to the to Hillary before the debate began. Hold on, you know, crickets all get out. Anyway, she decided to tell the current chairman of the Republican National Convention to go to hell on live TV. Now, she wasn't talking to the person directly. She was answering a question from the commentators and basically made a statement that that person could go, you know, that the chairman of the Republican convention could go to hell. Well, Terrence Williams says, how did she even get hired by Fox News? On Fox News, they really are? Well, I guess he doesn't keep up with who owns what. You don't know, folks. The current management of Fox News are liberals. The boys, I think it's George Mur or, you know, Mur Murdoch's boys. Both of them are diehard liberals. That's how she got hired. If you've watched Fox News in the last 10 years, you'll see that a lot of their commentators have had to tone down certain things on certain subjects. Um, certain people have been let go. Things of that nature. And for them to bring on Donna Brazil, case in point. The other thing I'll say is this, that that um, some of these stories that they cover have no, no newsworthy, you know, no newsworthy merit to them. They're just what I call fluffy stuff stories. Um, stories, like I said, that have real, no, no newsworthy merit practical value whatsoever. Um, they've kind of kind of jumped on board with the mainstream media in that sense to divert the attention of the population. Again, all this part, my opinion. But anyway, I just thought to myself, you know, here's this comedian, he's, he's been to the White House several times, you know, I just thought that somebody needed to tell him that boys are flaming liberals and, and they have basically or they're basically trying to ruin what their dad created. Now I'm not saying Rupert Murdoch is some angel. I don't know much enough about him to say one way or the other. I just know there was a lot of sexual harassment scandal behind him but you know they did the same thing to Bill O'Reilly to get him off Fox News. And a lot of a lot of what happened to Bill O'Reilly was found with no merit, 
somewhat, I guess, to an extent, but a lot of it was found baseless. Um, I noticed that in, even in the mainstream media, when they want to get rid of somebody, it, it's all of a sudden the sexual harassment thing falls into play. Hmm. Chris Matthews, that brings me another one. Chris Matthews was basically forced to resign because of this. Huh. He's a liberal. Huh. See what I mean, folks? But anyway, I guess we start going off reservation. Hey, they, they'll do what they got to do. But anywho, anyhow, anyway, folks, I just thought I'd share that one because I thought it was kind of funny. You know, um, if you ever watch Terrence Blame, he, he, he's a die hard Trump fan. thought somebody that had been to the White House many times, he's been a senior president, he would even know who's running Fox News now, but I guess not. So yeah, there you have it. But uh, what's going to be interesting is when the uh, next round of primaries takes off, See how many more potential delegates that each of the candidates will get. Rumor has it that if Elizabeth Warren drops from the race, she will throw her support behind uh, Mr. Sanders. Um, but given given the nature of the Democratic Party, I wouldn't be surprised if the last minute she drops and throws a hell mary to Joe Biden got this sneaky suspicious feeling the party's going to get behind Warren and say listen drop who you support behind Biden because that's who we want and the next time the next, the next go round you're going to be our primary ticket could be wrong about that one folks but just consider the possibility that that could happen I'm just putting it out there that's kind of how they dangled the carrot in front of Hillary first time. Look, you drop out, put your weight behind this individual, and we'll make sure that, 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 that you get the nomination next election. But in the meantime, to appease your feelings, we're going to let you be the Secretary of State. Wink, wink. But anyway, so we shall see. We shall see. I just thought, you know, anyway. But here in local news in North Carolina, um, Dan Forrest uh, took the Republican primary to run for the governorship, and Mark Robbins, you don't know who he is, he's the gentleman that they showed on TV year before last, I believe it was in the city of Greensboro, North Carolina, when the city was con contemplating enacting certain laws that would restrict and infringe upon the Second Amendment. He was the big black gentleman that got up there and said, you know, uh, I it basically reminded those people on the, up at the city council that uh, he was the NRA, and he was the people, um, and that he was a law-abiding citizen, and, and uh, no. anyway, he, he well-polished gentleman, and, and spoke his piece very, very, very well, and he made the decision that he was going to run for the lieutenant governorship of this great state, and uh, my hat's off to him, uh, and, and he definitely did win the the Republican primary to run for lieutenant governor here in the state, he's got my vote. Likewise, Dan Forrest does too. Anything get old Roy Boy Cooper out of out of the state of North Carolina. Um, he need Roy Boy Cooper needs to just pack up and move to Cuba. If it wasn't for the current state legislature, North Carolina would already be uh, going down the roads that Virginia's going down um, and California. Fortunate we had the wherewithal to make sure we had some legislatures in there that could stop a lot of this crap that 
Roy Boy Cooper's trying to pass. Um, and again, I've told you my opinion about how Roy Cooper got elected to the governorship. It, it don't, to me, it just, you know, why Pat McCrory didn't fight it any harder in court is beyond me, but uh, the wherewithal and the, just, it was just too much circumspect, I say circumspect, like I know what I'm talking about there, there was just too much circumstantial evidence in the sense that it was overwhelming that it should have at least been investigated. Too many reports of last-minute votes coming in in the counties that, that finally won it for Roy Cooper over Pat McCrory. Yeah, it was a tight race because there were a lot of people that didn't care for McCrory's opinion on the, the bathroom bill that he had passed. Now, talked about that, too. Pat McCrory didn't tell the business that, you know, what to do with their bathrooms. He just basically said the bill protects the business from government interference as to who can use what facilities in a private business that was his thing um, and the fact that he also believed that uh, by allowing men who identify themselves to be women to go into a women's bathroom it honestly is a ploy to prey on young girls and it, you know what I fully believe that that could happen gender debate, you know, and, and of course the left used it to basically crucify him in the media and he was not re-elected. But it was only by a slim margin and it was only because of a couple counties had some last minute votes come in late in the evening. And the other part of the counties that, that those votes came in from complained about problems with their voting machines and that they had to extend the polls and it, a lot of just, you know, suspicious, that was where I was trying to get earlier, suspicious activity going on. Now, at the end of the day, was it a legitimate election? Well, I wouldn't have been counting the votes, so I don't know. But Roy Cooper was the Attorney General during that time before the state of North Carolina and failed to back his governor because of politics. In other words, he failed to uphold the oath of his office because he held his party in higher esteem. So, I, after that, I lost a lot of respect for Roy Cooper. But, hopefully, this next go-around, we'll get some strong conservative people in office in North Carolina that will you know, continue to attract economic growth to the state, get our personal income tax eliminated. So that was part of Roy Cooper, or Roy Cooper, this for me. That was part of Pat McCrory's plan was to eventually eliminate personal income tax in the state of North Carolina. Well, shoot, after his first year in office, state income tax went down. But when he lost his bid for a second term, that legislation has not come to full fruition. Honestly, North Carolina has enough industry, enough tourist economy, enough people passing through that we ought not have a state income tax. Just putting it out there. They can do away with that, and you'll attract even more business to come here. But I digress, folks. And anyway, that's pretty much it for today. Um, just want to share those couple little tidbits with you. Kind of got up on a tangent with North Carolina politics and policy, um, things of that nature. Didn't mean to, but hey, it is what it is. But anyhow, we're going to get on down the road here to work. Try to do some things today to influence some young minds to be better better technicians and better citizens hope everybody's doing okay today um want everybody to stay safe out there take care and as always charities i'd ask you to help out with tunnels to towers.org 
pin up for vets, ballot for veterans, folds of honor. They can't do it by themselves, folks. Every dollar you can give them goes a long way. It helps our veterans, our families, our first responders, and theirs as well. So anything you can do to help them out would be greatly appreciated. Vendors, Money Quick Pond, Rayford Road, Fayetteville, North Carolina. They've got a website I believe you can go to. You can kind of look and see what some stuff they carry. So if you're ever passing through here, go check them out. Roberts Custom Woodwork on Etsy, along with Unsung Patriot on Etsy. Go check them out. Both great couple guys. Roberts, close personal friend of mine, makes phenomenal wood carving products. Check him out. You know, um, if there's something that you want made, contact him. See what he can do for you. Black Bag Resources and Black Rifle Coffee. Check them out. And like I said, if you if you like my poetry, I read on Monday nights. You know, a lot of them I read out of my two books I've written, and I'm starting to work on a third. Um, but if you haven't got those two books yet, look down in the links below. You know, you'll find the link to them on Amazon. Prices have been reduced. Um, lots of an old soldier's now six fifty, and an old soldier's poetry and prose of life, love, and liberty is now ten dollars. Uh, get your copy today. If you want those autographed, you can email me at rants of an old soldier at gmail.com and I'll be glad to tell you where to mail them to. I'll sign them and I'll pay to mail them back to you. Uh, if you'd like to have them signed, I'd be more than glad to do that. So if you can, just check all that down below. Like I said, I got my t shirt link down there somewhere. So check them out. Anywho, anyhow, anyway, folks, it's the old soldier. Gotta go. Take care. God bless. Old soldier out.